Here we go. I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Round number two. Here we go. I think we're good this time. Man, I'm sorry for the technical difficulties and being a little bit late. <laughs> But you know, in, in, in the famous words of Gandalf the Great Wizard in Lord of the Rings, I believe he said once, A wizard is never late. He arrives precisely when he means to. <laughs> so, a preacher is never late. Same thing applies to preaching. A preacher always arrives precisely when he means to. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, let's begin. We're going to be in Psalm 60 today. Good morning, everybody. How you doing? Um, Psalm 60. Or, you know, we can't read first. We have to sing. What am I doing? Messing up. All right, Psalm 60 will be our opening verse. But uh, before that, we're going to sing Banner of the Cross. Let me get a drink. <clears throat> we're going to sing, as always, we start in our Soul Stirring Songs and Hymn Book. Number 405, the banner of the cross. Show it to you. It's the banner of the cross. We're going to sing all four verses and uh, we're going to get moving because this message, I don't want it to drag on forever. Because we got other things to do, but let's do this. The banner of the cross. There's a royal banner given for display to the soldiers of the king. As an ensign fair we lift it up today, well as ransomed ones we sing. Marching on, marching on, for Christ count everything but loss. And to crown him king, toil and sing, neath the banner of the cross. Though the foe may rage and gather as the flood, let the standard be displayed. And beneath its folds as soldiers of the Lord, for the truth be not dismayed. Marching on, marching on, for Christ count everything but loss. And to crown him king, Toil and sing neath the banner of the cross. Over land and sea, wherever men may dwell, make the glorious tidings known. Of the crimson banner, now the story tell, well the Lord shall claim his own. Marching on, marching on, for Christ count everything but loss. And to crown him king, toil and sing, neath the banner of the cross. When the glory draws and drawing very near, it is hastening day by day. Then before our king the foe shall disappear and the cross the world shall sway. Marching on, marching on, for Christ count everything but loss. And to crown him king, Toil and sing neath the banner of the cross. Amen. Amen. The banner of the cross. That's what we're waving today in the name of Jesus. I don't care what you are, what nationality you are, what language you speak. We are all united together under the banner of Jesus Christ today. Lord, thank you. For your precious son, Jesus, thank you for adopting us into the family so we could all be brothers and sisters. As I said, Psalm 60 is where we're going to begin. Um, if you have a King James Bible, you could read along with me. Psalm 60, the Bible says, O oh God, thou hast cast us off, thou hast scattered us, thou hast been displeased. O oh, turn thyself to us again. Thou hast made the earth to shake, or excuse me, the earth to tremble. Thou hast broken it. Heal the breaches thereof, for it shaketh. Thou hast showed thy people hard things. Thou hast made us to drink the wine of astonishment. Thou hast given a banner 
to them that fear thee, that it may be displayed because of the truth, Salah, that thy beloved may be delivered, save with thy right hand and hear me. God hath spoken in his holiness, I will rejoice. I will divide Shashem and meet out the valley of Succoth. Gilead is mine, and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim also is the strength of mine head. Judah is my lawgiver. Moab is my washpot over Edom. Will I cast out my shoe? Philistia, triumph thou because of me. Who will bring me into the strong city? Who will lead me into Edom? Wilt not thou, O God, which hast cast us off? And thou, O God, which didst not go out with our armies? Give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. Through God we shall do valiantly, for he it is that shall tread down our enemies. The word of the Lord. Amen. Greetings, friends and colleagues, my brothers and sisters, it's Sean Elvis. Um, back with another video today. You know, there's a lot of wickedness going on in this evil world, and uh, we kind of got to tough it out like a soldier. So my question for you today is, are you a soldier of the Lord? Are you uh, just a, stand, a bystander, just watching uh, this world as it, as it uh, <laughs> uh, goes through all its madness? And you're just watching it. Now, I don't watch the news anymore, but you know, all you have to do is turn the news on for a second and, and you'll get a dose of all the craziness, all the wickedness, all the evil that's happening in the world today. And, you know, I look at the state of the church today and I see uh, God's people are scattered all over the world. You know, we're not in one place. We're all over the place, across the globe. Friends, in this opening reading, that I read in Psalms chapter 60. Excuse me, I'm thirsty. <laughs> it was written by one of the greatest soldiers of all time. A commander. A king. King David. King David was a man who knew how to fight. He knew what it took to be a soldier. He was a soldier himself. He knew how to go to war. Not because he wanted to, but because he knew how wicked the world was. And what got him started was he defeated one of the greatest soldiers of his day, Goliath. Maybe you've heard of the story. Goliath was literally the toughest, the biggest, toughest, strongest, meanest, scariest soldier of his time. And David defeated him, young David. Not for glory or honor, but he did it just because he believed God could help him. He believed God would use him to save his people. Now keep in mind, David wasn't a soldier at the time when he defeated Goliath. No, he, he, was, he was just a young boy. He wasn't even a soldier, right? He was just a, a shepherd. He had no combat experience. Never killed a man before in his whole life. But later, when King David wrote this song, he, he had been a king, he had seen many battles, killed many men. But notice what he wrote in verse 12. I just want to revisit it real quick. He said, Through God we shall do valiantly, for he it is that shall tread down our enemies. He said, My God will beat you, Goliath. You know, I'm... I may not have the experience, but God does. The God that I believe in, he is with me, and he can defeat you. You know, in this psalm, David writes about the trials that Israel was going through at this time in history. And he thanked God, and he praised him for all the victories that God has won for the Israelites so far. But at this point, Israel was backslidden, right? They weren't following all the commandments of the Lord. They weren't doing what was right. You know, they fell into idolatry and sin, various other sins. And, you know, so God wasn't helping them win their battles anymore. And, and, and King David was praying to God. This was a song 
of prayer, a psalm of prayer, begging God to be with them again, once again, like he had before in the past. Now I want you to think of some battles that you may be struggling and fighting in your own life. They may be personal battles. Um, they may be family battles. They may be church battles or community battles or or battles in your workplace, at your job, whatever the case may be. You know, anything in your life, we, we always have We always have, um, excuse me, one of my camera's batteries dying. Uh, we're going to continue on with this message. Um, the question that I have is, are you a soldier of the Lord? Is the Lord on your side or are you backslidden like Israel was, right? You know, because the, the world says, you don't need the Lord. You don't need the Bible. You don't need to go to church. All you need to do is go to school, get your education, get more schooling, get a better job, make more money. You just need to get stronger. You need to get smarter. That's how you're going to win your battles. Just try a little bit harder. You can do it. And you know, I'm not here to say you can't do it and you shouldn't do those things. But King David, the greatest commander, he said, "I need. we need God on our side. We need God because without God, we can't win. You know, now King David was a tough soldier. He's tough, right? He's a commander of an army. And he even knew that without God, he didn't have a chance, right? You know, I've heard it said before that there are no atheists on the battlefield. Because when the bullets start flying and the bombs start exploding and you start seeing your friends die in front of your eyes, uh, even the most staunch atheist starts praying. You prepare yourself to meet your creator, you know? Too many times in our life we we only go to God when we need him, right? You know, people who, uh, you know, the, the problem is, is a lot of times us, right? We wait until it's a life and death situation. We absolutely have no other options. Then we go to God, you know? Like Israel here, they waited too long. They were backslidden for too long. The enemy was knocking on their door about to destroy them. And that's when uh, King David said, hey, we need to turn back to the Lord. You know, don't wait for the enemy to knock on your door to turn back to the Lord to start reading your Bible, you know. A good soldier trains for battle and is prepared for battle long before the war even comes, long before the enemy even shows his face. So, you know, you think you don't need to read this book? You don't need to read the Bible? Think again. You know? You think you're going to have time to read this Bible when the real struggle starts hitting you in your life? You're going to wish that you had already read it. You need to read it. Every day. No excuses. We have no excuses not to read our Bible every day. Even if it's just one verse, you know? <clears throat> Now, we may not see physical bombs going off and physical bullets flying by our face, and praise God for that. Thank you. But, you know, make no mistake, we're on a battlefield. It's a spiritual battlefield that we're on, you know, and it's real. It's very real. And there are souls at stake, and there's wickedness and evil going on all around us every day, you know, and I don't mean to say this to scare you, right? Um... But on second thought, you know, maybe maybe you should be a little scared. Maybe you should be a little afraid. If you if you're backslidden, you're not going to church, you're not reading your Bible. God's not on your side. Maybe you have reason to be a little afraid. Okay? Cuz you know. But the thing is is if God is on your side, you have nothing to fear, right? God who could win every single battle. He's on your side. You have nothing to be afraid of, you know. But the devil, you know, he's a tricky person. Very tricky. He also knows the power of God. And, you know, that's why he tries to convince us that we can fight our own battles. Oh, yeah. He'll edge us on and say, hey, you can do it. You don't need God. Just fight me. And he'll edge you on to fight him toe to toe. And he'll try to speak to us in a way to make us feel like 
Oh yeah, well, I can beat him. I can beat him all on my own. I don't need to read my Bible. I don't need God on my side. And he'll make us believe, falsely believe, that we can defeat him all on our own. He'll, he'll tell us, you know that Bible over there? You don't need that. You don't need to read that. <laughs> as long as you go to work, make money, get more money in that bank. You know, that's what he'll try to convince us of. You see that guy over there? You don't need to talk to him about Jesus. No, nah, he'll be fine. He'll be fine on his own. Don't listen to those lies of the devil's friend. Those are lies of the devil. You know, he'll, he'll try to tell us that we don't need to follow the commandments. That, is, that we can do it some other way. We could fight our battles in our life some other way other than following the commandments of the Bible. Some other way without God. You know, friends, we're all in the spiritual battle. If you uh, accepted the Lord Jesus, you got saved, you're part of the brethren. You're one of the brothers or the sisters in Christ Jesus. You're on the spiritual battlefield whether you like it or not. And, you know, just like any other physical battlefield, we need to understand that, you know, the enemy does not fight fair. The enemy is going to fight to destroy us. He's ruthless. So if we're not prepared, he's... We're in trouble. We're in trouble. We need to arm ourselves just like any other soldier. We need to train. We need to be ready because the enemy's coming. You know, maybe he's not knocking on your door right now. Maybe the trial you're going through is not that tough right now, but he's coming. Make no mistake about it. And to face this spiritual warfare that we have going on all around us, you know, I mean, just because God is the commander, right? Jesus is our commander doesn't mean that we don't have a duty to stand and to fight and to guard our post wherever we're at in this world and defend ourselves and defend the people around us. You know, we need to draw those spiritual lines in the sand and mark our territory. Just like you would see a real military draw lines in, on the map and, on the, and in the real world and put up borders and defend those borders. You know, we need to put our spiritual flags up, our banners, and wave them high. Just like you see in the military. You know, they always uh, uh, raise their flag up as high as they can go on that flagpole, you see. You say, well, why, why do I need a banner, Sean? What, I mean, what do you want me to fly? The, uh, the, the Star of David? The, the flag of Israel? No, no, no. You know, this is a spiritual banner that I'm talking about, right? And, and the spiritual banner is one of the most important parts of any army, right? The banner that you fly lets all the people around you know what army you're fighting for. You know, it lets your allies know, hey, I can go to this fort, this place and be safe. You know, and it lets your enemies know, hey, I better not go over there. I'm going to get, I'm going to get uh, harmed, right? Or, you know, I'm going to be in trouble if I go over there. You know, any banner that you fly unites us as soldiers you know so we aren't just lone rangers out there on the battlefield right you know um i remember when i studied tactics you know they they said never go out into the battlefield alone right you always go without with at least one teammate one teammate you know because there's something psychologically about doing things alone um it's just not good you know, that's why even Jesus said he sent us out two by two. But, you know, any army needs to be organized, right? It needs to be strong. It needs to be united together. And that's what the banner does. So most importantly, I want you to know that our spiritual commander gives us orders, right? And those marching orders are right here in this Bible. You know, he gives us exactly what we need to do. And as long as we follow his orders to a T, just like a real soldier would follow his commander in chief or his chief, whatever the case may be. That's how we need to uh, fight our spiritual battles in our life. You know, friends, because our, sp our spiritual commander is God, you know, and, and the same God that fought, uh, that helped David defeat Goliath and the same God that helped Moses lead the Israelites and defeat um, the Egyptians 
in the Red Sea. You know, that's the same God who resurrected Jesus from the dead. You know, that's our commander. You know, somebody we can trust, somebody who will go fight. You know, nowadays commanders kind of hang out in the back and just bark orders. But in the old days, a, a true commander, a leader, would be the first one on the battlefield charging into battle. He'd be the first one to swing his sword at the enemy. That's our commander. He goes before us to fight our battles. He's the one who's fierce, who will lead us into victory. You know, but unfortunately, too many times, we try to fight our own battles in front of the Lord, right? We think, I just, I got this, Lord. You know, you know too often we think we're strong enough. Friends, let me tell you, uh, no matter how strong you are, we're not, you're not strong enough to fight this spiritual battle without God. You know, I don't care how tough you are. I don't care how smart you are. You know, Satan is smarter. He's trickier. He's been around longer than us, right? And he doesn't fight fair. Remember that. You know, so if you're a tough guy, he'll outsmart you. If you're a smart smart guy, he's just going to overpower you. Right? Friends, my comrades, what I'm trying to say is this. You know, we need God on our side. Just like David said. Psalm 60, verse 12. He said, through God, we shall do valiantly. Valiantly means victoriously. You know, you... uh. You're um, filled with courage, courageously, you know, for he it is that shall tread down our enemies. God's the one who's going to defeat our spiritual battles through God. That's how we conquer our spiritual battles. We have to obey the commandments of this book right here, the Holy Bible. You know, we need to make sure that we're reading our Bible so we know what the marching orders of our commander says. Make sure we're praying every single day, keeping a good communication line with the leader, with the commander, every single day without ceasing, you know, this spiritual fight is not just for Sunday morning or Saturday morning or once a week, you know, it's every single day. You know, this battle doesn't just stop uh, for you or for me when we say, hey, I need a break, time out, pause, no, no, the devil's not going to wait for you. He's going to wait to catch you sleeping. That's what he's going to wait for. And he's going to attack you when you least expect it, when you let your guard down. You know, we need to be like soldiers, strong, disciplined soldiers. We need to remember that when, you know, when we enlist in God's army, <laughs> when you believe on the Lord Jesus, we, en we enlisted, whether we like it or not, in the spiritual battle. It's a full-time job, 24-7, 365, no rest, no holidays, no weekends, no days off, no vacation time. You're a spiritual soldier now on a spiritual battlefield, and this is a war zone. And the battle is for your own soul and for the souls of those around you, your friends, your neighbors, your family. So we need to make sure that we're ready for this battle. We need, we need to establish our perimeter. Do you have any boundaries in your life? Have you established a border, a perimeter? What type of music are you listening to? Do you have limits and say, no, I can't listen to that. No, I can't watch that television show. Or what about the places you go to? No, I can't. I can't go to that place. I'm sorry. Or what about the substances you put in your, your, your body? How, how, do you, how are you treating your, your, your temple of the Holy Ghost? What about the friends you hang out with or the groups that you're involved with? Do you have any spiritual borders up? Do you have any limits to keep the bad and the evil and the wickedness out? Do you know how to say no? No, I cannot watch that movie right now. I have to read my Bible. No, I cannot go to that party right now. I have to go soul winning. I'm sorry. You know, we need to discipline ourselves like soldiers. You know, just like a soldier needs to be ready to shoot down the enemy. We need to be ready to shoot down our spiritual enemy, the devil, with God's word. I remember when Jesus was in uh, the desert and the devil was tempting him and he would just fire back with scripture. No, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. No, thou shalt love the Lord thy God and him only. No, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word. God's word. 
is our sword, the Bible says. We need to know this book and read this book because that is what's going to help us defend ourselves against this spiritual uh, wickedness in high places. You know, some, you know, if you get somebody in your life who tempts you with sin, whoever it is, you know, you need to be able to quote chapter and verse why that's wrong and say, no, will not sin. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. The Bible says, I will love my God with all my heart, my soul, my might. You know, soldiers, what else do they have to do? They have to make sacrifices, right? I mean, what are you willing to sacrifice? You willing to sacrifice an hour out of your, uh, your day to read the Bible? You willing to sacrifice an hour out of your day to go soul winning, win some souls to the Lord? You know, we need to establish our borders. You know, we need to constantly be evaluating things in our life and asking ourselves, is this pleasing to God? You know, because if it's not, I need to get it outside of my perimeter and I need to keep what's inside my perimeter holy, as holy as I can. Turn to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Um, and as you're turning there, you know, I'm just going to say, what are some th other things that you uh, think of when you hear the word soldier? Soldier. You know, I think of a disciplined person. You know, somebody who's dedicated and tough and willing to sacrifice themselves for the greater cause. You know, sometimes... When you're on the battlefield, you have to sleep in places that aren't comfortable. You have to eat food that maybe is not the most delicious food, right? You have to endure the elements, carry a heavier load than you're used to. And sometimes you have to make the ultimate sacrifice and lay your life down to save somebody else. 2 Timothy chapter 2. You know, Timothy, he was a young preacher. He was... a uh, he was being taught by the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul, on, on how to be a leader, how to be the leader of his local church there. And in this chapter, the Apostle Paul compares him with his, uh, compares the spiritual battle that he's going through, uh, that the struggle that they were facing at that time. You know, Paul was in prison. He was, he was being persecuted for preaching the Bible, for preaching the gospel that Jesus Christ had resurrected from the dead. And he's telling Timothy, hey, Timothy, don't worry about this. We're soldiers. We're on a battlefield. Expect the fight. Expect it and harden yourself and push through it. Fight through it. Just like an enemy or a soldier wouldn't back down from his enemy, you know, we're not to back down from this persecution. You know, because even if they kill us, they're just going to make us stronger, right? Because you know, you know, if you if if you kill a child of the Lord, <laughs> you kill one of the Lord's soldiers, especially a valiant soldier who's fighting hard to the death. That's going to make God angry. And you know, the Bible says it is a it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. One of the worst things you could do is piss God off and go ahead, do your worst, kill me. You're just going to piss God off more and he's going to come after you. But let's read here, 2 Timothy uh, chapter 2, starting in verse 1. The Bible says, thou, thou therefore, my son, be strong, strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. He tells him to be strong, Timothy. You know, this is the Bible talking to you too. God's telling us, hey, well, you need to be strong. You know, what does it mean to be strong? That doesn't necessarily mean physical strength, right? He's telling us to be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. That means having an, un, having an unshakable faith. Do you have a strong faith in the Lord that, hey, the Lord's going to get me through this battle? Or, or, or are you weak and you think the Lord can't do this? You know, no matter what happens, I cannot fall into sin. I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to stick with following the commandments. I'm going to be disciplined. You know, nothing's going to stop me from obeying my commander because I believe in my commander. I'm never going to stop fighting, you know. Let's read on. Verse 2. And the things that thou hast heard of 
Me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. We need to teach others. We need to train other soldiers. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of the of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth, entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet he is not crowned, except he strive lawfully. The husbandman that laboreth must be the first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, the Lord giveth the understanding in all things. We're going to stop there. But Paul's basically saying, look, you can't cheat your way to a victory, Timothy. You can't cheat your way to success and get out of this battle by cheating. Now, sure, you may be able to cheat for a while and cover it up, but eventually you're going to be exposed. He says, unless thou strive lawfully, you will not see the victory. Okay, In the military, there's this term called uh, stolen valor. Maybe you've heard of it. It's, it's uh, when a civilian tries to pretend that he's been in the military, right? And he tries to get the uh, um, prestige and honor and glory as a as an ex-combat vet. Even though he's never been to combat, he was sitting on the sidelines just watching. That's called stolen valor, okay? Stolen valor. A lot of people want to raise the banner of, of Christ and claim, oh, I'm this holy man of the Lord. I follow all the commandments. I go to church every Sunday, you know, this and that. And they want to claim that, hey, I'm a strong soldier, but really they're fake. Just like a stolen valor, just like a civilian putting on a military uniform and pretending to be a combat vet. Sure, you know, they may look strong. They may look the part. They're in uniform. They look and talk like it, but you know, they've never seen combat. They've never fired their weapon at the enemy. You know, haven't you seen any, uh, well, I won't say any names, but, you know, there's a lot of um, stolen valor on the internet and Facebook. You know, people post things about Jesus on Facebook. Maybe they preach uh, about Jesus. They, They sing songs about Jesus. But when nobody else is looking, when they're all alone in their room, when the spotlight isn't on them and nobody else can see what's going on, they don't do the right thing. They sin. They're sinning in darkness in their closet at home. That's spiritual stolen valor. That's what I would call that. You know, that's raising the banner of Jesus, but really inside your camp, which is exactly what was happening to the Israelites. They were waving the banner of Jesus and God. And amen, they had the right God, of course. They had the right banner flying, but they weren't. They were backsliding. They were worshiping false gods on the inside, thinking that God wouldn't notice. You know, we need to avoid that in our lives. We need to avoid raising our banner up, um, even though, and telling the world, "Hey, this is my banner. I'm I'm a Christian," even though you're not following the commandments. You're secretly not living right. When you're all alone by yourself, you know, when nobody else is looking, you see the Apostle Paul here is warning Timothy not to fall into that, not to have stolen valor. He's saying, look, a real soldier is going to go through tough times and you need to endure hardness. You just need to endure it. Endure it means just keep pushing through it, right? You're going to have to endure it. And sure, you're, as, a, as, a, as a soldier of Jesus, you're going to get mocked. For your beliefs, okay? You're going to get ostracized. It's going to happen. You, you're going to get lonely at times. You're going to lose your friends and your family. Some of them, not all of them, hopefully. You know, but you're going to get taken advantage of. You may get fired from your job. You may lose your job for your beliefs. You know, our enemy is going to do whatever he can to get you to quit. And he knows you better than you know yourself. He knows exactly what he can do to get you to quit. To get you to not get out of bed and not go talk to that person uh, about Jesus. Not to read your Bible that day. Not to go to church. Because he knows that if he can get you to quit, that, you know, if he can get you to take your banner down, that's the only thing he's afraid of. Because if he gets you to quit, then God's not going to be on your side. And if God's not on your side, the enemy isn't afraid. 
Because God's the only one that can take him out, remember? He wants us to take our spiritual banner down. What is our spiritual banner anyway? The spiritual flag that we fly, what is it? Because it's not a there's not a physical flag, like I said earlier. You know, our fl- what flag do we fly as believers of Jesus, as as modern day Israelites? Because remember, this isn't a physical war, it's a spiritual war. We have a spiritual banner. So how do you identify uh, 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 an ally, a friend, as opposed to a foe? You know, it's through our actions. Through our actions, through our speech, through our conversation, both verbal and nonverbal communication, how we communicate, how we treat other people, how we speak to other people, how we live our lives, the things that we do, the things that uh, others see us do, things that we do in private, right? When nobody else is looking. That's how we show the world our banner. That's how... um, You know, the world should look at us and see our banner for miles away and say, they should see how, just how we live our lives, how we act, how we treat others, how we speak and and see Jesus through us. You know, just like you would see a flag flying um, in the United States or whatever, right? You know, people should be able to see that flag and know, okay, I I know what that country's about, right? They should be able to look at you and say, oh, okay, I know exactly what that person's about. They... They they follow the teachings of Christ. That's how the world, that's how we should want the world to look at us. So we could find other fellow soldiers look at us and say, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a friend over there. I like this guy. You know, I'm gonna go hang out with him. You know, how are you living your life? Are you living your life in a way that invites other believers to you? Can they recognize you, you as, as a friend? As somebody who lives like Jesus and follows the commandments of this book? Are you a fellow soldier of the Lord? Do you create an environment around you where people could, other uh, like-minded uh, Christians can have fellowship with you and friendship and camaraderie? Camar- I can't even say that word. Camaraderie? <laughs> you know, we should be making it known to the whole world, you know, flying our flag proud every single day. You know, we should not be ashamed to put our perimeters up on our borders and say, no, no blaspheming the Lord, the Lord's name around me. Not going to happen. Uh uh-uh. uh. Either you stop that or I'm out of here, right? You know, we should, we, should, we should wave our banners, friends. We should not be ashamed of this book and the commandments and what we believe about the Bible. You know, just as the song goes, we're beneath the banner of the cross. Beneath the banner of the cross. Beneath. Okay, the cross is one of the most important things to us because it represents something greater than us. Greater than any one of us. This Bible. Jesus. Our God, we kneel at the cross. We kneel to God. He is our commander, you know, just like um, they, they teach you in, in school, you know, to put your hand uh, on, over your heart when you, when you uh, salute the flag or whatever, right, of the nation, right? We are beneath the cross, you know, friends. God has given us commandments to read our Bibles, to pray, to love one another, to flee fornication, flee immodesty, flee filthy language, flee laziness. All these things should be outside of our perimeter. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Your pastor is not going to uh, fight the battle for you. You have to do it. You know, nobody's going to come in and, and do the work you need to do. Nobody's going to put up the banner for you. Nobody's going to set the perimeter for you. You have to do that. You have to clean up your life for yourself. Right? I'm not going to do it for you. I can't do it. Your friends can't do it for you. Your, your own parents, your mom, your dad, your children, they cannot do it for you. You have to do it for yourself. You know, nobody's going to raise that banner and put the perimeter up in your own life. But you, you have to say, hey, no sin allowed in my life. It's our personal responsibility to raise our own banner up for the Lord so that those around us can see it. 
We have to guard our own post. Wherever you're at in the world, wherever you're at in life, however old you are, young, whatever your situation is, you have a post on this battlefield and you have to guard it and defend it, you know? And you, you, and you need to be welcoming to other uh, friends and allies and other, you know, believers of this book, other followers of the commandments. You need to be inviting them when they're passing by. Hey, do you need help? You know, because, you know, I, I'm talking about being a soldier, but, you know, not, not everything about the army and the military is, 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 is fighting, right? You know, some people, we need nurses, right? We need engineers and technicians and scientists, innovators and all kinds of things, right? You don't just have to be a soldier. That's just one way to communicate uh, this um, analogy. But, you know, may, maybe you just want to comfort people right maybe you need to heal wounded soldiers who who've been to battle and you know there's a combat nurse a combat medic you know it's vital to the team right it's vital to the organization to our to our army here our lord's army you know so you know maybe you specialize in guiding others or giving backup and support to others whatever the case is you know you need to establish your home base and set it up to be effective on this battlefield. And you need to prepare that base, you know, that so that, you know, in the event Christ, you know, Christ came back today, you know, right now, would he be pleased with your battlefield? If he came to audit you and, and check in on how you're doing, would he be pleased with how you're running uh, your post? Or would he take your banner down and say, this is a disgrace. This is a disgrace. You need, you need to clean this place up. You can't wave my banner here until you clean this up, right? Jesus said, uh, clean the cup inside first, and then we'll work on the outside, right? You know, so God, you know, I, I kind of want to close because this message is getting long, but friends, my message for the day is this, right? God is our commander, of course. And, you know, of course, he's going to fight our battles and, and win them. But at the same time, it's our responsibility to do the right thing. Just like King David said in his Psalms, you know, God, unfortunately, stopped fighting the battles for the Israelites because they had become a disgrace. You know, even though they were flying the banner of the Lord, they had stopped doing the right thing. You know, friends, when nobody else is looking, when nobody else is watching, you got to do the right thing, you know. Ugh. You may be able to fool man and me and your friends and neighbors for a while, but you can't fool God. He knows everything. The Bible says he knows every intention of our hearts, what we do, why we do what we do. So we need to get out there and fight for what is right. Fight for holiness, godliness, cleanliness. And we need to endure the hardness when Satan attacks us, right? And we also need to realize that we're not the chief. We don't make the rules. We need to follow and obey God's rules. Follow His rules. That's how we're going to gain the victory. That's how we're going to win this spiritual fight. We have to make sure that we're putting Christ first. Everything else, I don't want to say it doesn't matter, but it's second to Christ. The Bible says, put, uh, what does it say, uh, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's the first priority for all of us. And like I said, you know, you may be the toughest, you may be the smartest. But if you're not putting Christ first, you're going to lose. But here's the thing. If you are putting Christ first, you're reading your Bible, soul winning, getting those perimeters set up and that banner raised high. You can do it. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. That's what the Bible says. You know, we can set our perimeters up, keep the sin out of our lives. When the attacks come, and they will come, and we resist the temptations, we hold off. You just hold that line 24-7, 365, no matter what it takes. You endure hardness like a good soldier. We raise our banner up proud. Knowing full well, with full faith, we're strong in our faith and our conviction that God's going to protect us. 
He's not going to let us fall. And even if the enemy were to kill us, hey, God must have a plan. And that's just going to piss him off, and he's just going to attack the enemy even harder. You know, he'll never abandon us, the Bible says. Right? Even Paul in prison, he being stoned to death, Paul never thought, God's not with him. He's not going to abandon me, right? So don't raise that flag up, friends, if you don't really mean it, right? Raise that flag up and mean it. Mean it. You know? Don't be afraid. Be a soldier. Because with God on our side, just like King David said, through God, we shall do valiantly. Amen. For he it is that shall tread down our enemies. That's my message for the day, friends. My comrades today. <laughs> my soldiers in the Lord. You know, through God we shall do valiantly, friends. Through God, through the Bible. That's how we're going to win our spiritual battle. For it is he that shall tread down our enemies. Amen. You know, I'm going to close in prayer because it's been a while. Um, but you guys have a blessed day in the Lord and, and endure that hardness today. Whatever you're going through, stay strong. And God will see you through it. Um, we're going to close with a closing reading in Philippians chapter 3 if you want to read along. And uh, God bless you. God bless this message. In Jesus' name. <clears throat> Let's bow in prayer. Oh, man. Dear Heavenly Father, long but great message. Um, Lord, you're my commander. You're all of our commander in chief. You're our Lord, our creator. You're our almighty God. You're all powerful. You can win all of our battles. And Lord, please forgive us if ever we doubt you. If ever we raise our banner without you in, or in vain. You know, the banner that Jesus died for. Lord, we're sorry if we're ever weak, we're ever without faith. Please hear our apologies, Lord, and have mercy on us. And give us the time to correct this and fix this, Lord, and be your soldiers, the soldiers that you'd want us to be, so that we can raise your banner the right way, Lord, and we could fight this enemy and guard our posts. And Lord, some of us are tougher and stronger than others. Some of us are smarter than others. But Lord, we all have our gifts. Lord, help us use those gifts. Help remind us and keep in mind that none of us can win this battle without you, Lord. And humble us. Remind us that we need you so that we set up those perimeters and those borders in our lives. Stop trying to defeat the, the enemy on our own. Lord, our ways don't always work, Father, but your ways always do. And we thank you so much for teaching us your ways, the ways that work. Father, I ask that you give us a greater understanding of your ways. And show us things in our life that are wrong and potentially need to be fixed or corrected or eliminated or whatever the case is, Lord. Give us the wisdom to know the difference so that we could raise our banners up for you and make you proud. As good soldiers for you, Lord. You, you said you're the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, I ask that you use this message to strengthen all your spiritual soldiers around the world who hear this message. Many of us are scattered, Lord, and but we're not defeated. We're not defeated, Lord. You're still fighting for us, and we thank you so much for that. And just like G uh, King David prayed for the Israelites so many years ago, Lord, I'm praying for your people today. Don't give up, don't give up on us, Lord. We want to continue to fight. We want to see the victories in our lives. And we need you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. This message has been long enough, so uh, we're going to close Philippians chapter 3. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole chapter. We're going to read uh, to verse 12. God bless you guys. Have a great day. <clears throat> Philippians chapter 3. 
Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision, which worship God in the Spirit, and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in thee flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day to the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee. Concerning zeal, persecution, or excuse me, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ, yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, from whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is, which is of God, by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made comf- comfort unto his death. If by any means I might not attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, neither were already perfect, but I follow after. That I might not have, excuse me, if that I may have apprehended that for which also I am apprehended, Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God and Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you.